This is going to be a very quick demo of the Kali user interface. I want this demo to be short, so I'm going to go pretty fast, and I won't discuss things in detail. Um, I'm, I have a service mesh installed. It is the Istio book info demo. Again, I won't explain in detail all the services that are installed. If you want more details on that, just go to the book info example documentation on Istio's website. First, real quick, I want to show some of the basic features. Um, you're going to see the main graph view of the services and their interactions between them. You can pan the graph around. You can zoom the graph in and out. Um, you can change layouts. Right now I'm, I have this one layout, but there are other layouts if you want to relay out uh, based on different algorithms. I find that the book info demo lays out better on this first one. Um, you can select, highlight and select edges, nodes, and groups, and we'll discuss what these groups are in a minute, but in order for you to say zoom in and you want to focus on something, you can select edges, you can select nodes, and you can select boxes. Notice once something is selected, the highlighting and dimming is fixed. If I deselect, I can now focus in on parts of the graph as I hover over them. There is a legend available, so you can uh, um, find out what all these symbols and colors mean. So the first type of graph I want to show you is the app graph. I'm going to switch to the app graph here. What this shows is your application deployments, but notice the nodes are collapsed. So this is a more compressed view of the graph. If you have a large mesh, this is probably the first graph you want to look at because it is compressed and you, you'll see more of your mesh on the screen. If I switch to graph type of versioned app, it's the same view, only the apps that have multiple versions are exploded. So here you can see the Reviews app has versions V1, V2, and V3. And you can see the Ratings has a V1 and V2 app. Because Details is not versioned, you'll just see a single node. And same with Product Page. Now the third type of graph is the Workload graph. This is useful if you, if your mesh is not using the app or version labels on your pods. If you are not using app and version labels, you can still use Kiali by looking at this workload graph. And workloads, you'll notice, are denoted by circles, not squares. Now, these three different graph types can be augmented with actual service nodes. So let me go to the app graph first and show you that you can see you have details, reviews, ratings, and product page. These are the actual apps. If we want to see the, the services that are in front of these apps, we can go to display and show service nodes. So now you can see these triangles here. This is the actual product page service. In uh, Istio, these could be your virtual services and they get routed to your product page, uh, the product page service routes to the product page app. You can see these other services, the triangles, route to their applications. Now the service injection works for all three types of these graphs. So I go to my version app graph. Again, I could see what I saw before, only now you can see my services are injected into this graph. So now I can actually see what are the actual services that are accepting requests and where those requests, requests are getting routed to. And again, I can do the same thing with workload. So here you can see my actual workloads, in other words, the actual deployments, and you can see the services that are routing to them. You'll notice on the right side is the summary panel, and it's related to what you have selected. If you don't select anything, it's giving you an aggregated view of the graph in its entirety. But if I were to go to, say, an app view, and I select, say, the Details app, 
I'll see information about the details. I'll see requests per second coming in, HTTP requests going in and out. Now because details is at the end of the request chain, there is no outgoing. But if I were to look at the reviews, you could see it has some outbound requests because reviews app is sending in, uh, requests to the rating service because it, it's going to get uh, ratings information for the selected uh, book that the user wants to look at. Uh, we have uh, the Mongo service, which is an additional add-on to the book info demo. And what I want to show here is you can see the different edge symbol. Um, this is actually not accepting HTTP requests. Rather, there's TCP requests coming. So that's why you can see the chart here is a little different. You can see inbound traffic. If I were to look at the rating service, an interesting thing to note here is He's getting HTTP requests in, but is sending TCP requests out to the MongoDB, and that's why you can see outbound traffic is TCP, and inbound traffic is HTTP. And these sparkline graphs are showing historical data, and the table up here is showing an aggregate data. Here you can see 100% requests were successful. And I'm, in a little bit, I'm going to show you uh, when we get errors. You can see how these this summary panel changes and how the graph will denote errors. So why don't I do that now? I'm going to add a fault injection rule into Istio. And what I'm going to do is create a rule that when a request goes to the details service, half of those are going to fail. I'm going to I'm going to inject a fault. 50% of all requests going to details. So I'm going to look at these nodes here. So let me create that now, and then I'll point some things out on the graph as I do this. Okay, so it's created. Now here you can see. Notice the change here. We've had a little um, icon show up here. What this denotes is there is a virtual service or, or a destination role in play here. You can see it has virtual service. And what that virtual service is, it's going to inject uh, faults when product page sends some requests to details. So let's wait for requests to flow through the system and start failing. You're going to notice here that I'm fetching the last six hours of data every 15 seconds. So why don't I change this to the last five minutes and I'll do it every five seconds. Okay, now here you can see we're starting to get failures here. You see the orange is denoting we're starting to get failures. And now you can start seeing some of my requests are failing. And here you can see the spark lines are showing it as well. So we can keep waiting and as more and more requests start failing, this edge will eventually become red. The orange denotes there are some failures. If I look at the legend, you can actually see this. Um, under 20% error rate, you're going to see an orange. But if it's over 20%, things should start turning red in the graph. One thing to note here is because I have services injected in my graph, you're going to see an edge going to product page to details and then details to the app details. If I were to not show these service nodes, an interesting thing here is we still need to show, and here you can see the ed edge turned red now because now we're getting more and more errors. Um, because we're not showing services in this graph, you don't see a ratings triangle or a views triangle, but you do see a details triangle. This is because this error here is a client side error. Product page sent a, a message to the details service, but it never even got to the details app. It died before it even reached any workload. In order for us to be able to visualize this error, we need to inject a triangle here, a service details, just to show this uh, red edge, just to show there is a failure between product page and details. So even though you see I don't have my services node displayed, you're still going to have service nodes in this graph if they resulted in 
errors coming from the client side, from in this case from product page. So if I reshow my services, now you can see we changed the graph because now we're showing services everywhere. So now we can actually show all the requests going to details, whether they were successful or whether they failed. So that's the difference, that's a difference between um, showing service nodes and not showing service nodes, but yet still having errors. So here you can see as we're uh, sending requests through and through uh, this app, you can see now we're up to 50%, um, I'm sorry, 50%, should be co close to 50% errors. Right now we're at 31%. I have my uh, fault injection rule to fail every every other request essentially. So as I'm pumping requests through, Istio will eventually start failing up to 50%. I think once I, if I fetch up to maybe last minute and make it, yeah, there we go. So at the last minute, you can see I'm now closer to that 50%. Um, one thing I want to notice is what I got confused here earlier is I'm actually looking at this 50% here. This is an edge label, and these are the request percent of total. So what this is saying is if an app is sending requests to multiple services or multiple endpoints, you're just basically being told what the percentage is requests to each. So 50% of all product page outgoing requests are going to reviews and 50% are going to details. If I were to select here and look over here, now I can see what percentage of those were actually failures. If I look at other edge labels, this is a good segue to show the edge labels. I can show requests per second. So here you can see each channel is told what the request per second is on the edge label. If there are errors, you're also told the percentage of the errors here. I can look at TCP sent bytes. Now, none of these are TCP endpoints, but if I scroll over here, you can see I have TCP uh, byte throughput shown on the edge labels. I don't have MTLS set up, but if I did, you would see little lock icons on the labels where MTLS is enabled. And while I'm here, let me also show you the traffic animation. This just helps visualize the traffic going uh, through your mesh. The faster the dots go will represent a faster response time, and the number of dots flowing represents uh, your throughput. So we have the, as, for each, as fast as the requests are going, that's how the dots will go. The dots will go faster if your requests are being responded to quicker. And as your throughput increases, your requests per second increases, you're going to see more dots. The animation is slightly different for TCP, just to illustrate that these are TCP uh, connections and not HTTP connections, but you do still see animation. And again, the speed of the dots and the amount of the dots correspond to uh, rate and throughput. And lastly, I'm going to show a uh, another error. If you're familiar with the book info demo, if I were to go directly to the API of the product page and ask it for uh, book details, um, I'm going to give it. I'm going to send a request through my browser to that API endpoint, but I'm going to give it a bad book name and just show you what happens with the errors when that happens. So, for example, here I'm going to go directly to the book info product page endpoint, and I'm going to ask for the book foo but that does not exist. So you see I got some errors here. So if I were to go over to here, I should eventually start seeing that error show up. So here you can see product page, when it goes to details, app, it's always successful. Well, I just sent the request to the details app. It wasn't a fault injection. I didn't fail at the client side. The server side actually encountered an error. So at some point I should start seeing this edge here 
report an error. So what we'll wait is for Istio to collect the metrics for these requests, and then eventually uh, the backend Prometheus will scrape those metrics and provide the details to this edge here. Send some more. Okay, so here you can see it's now reporting that we're getting errors here. And if you look over here, notice that we have some red. That indicates five, 500 errors. Those are my client side fault injections. When I set up my fault injection rule in Istio, I told it to respond with a 555 error. That's why you're, you see red here. But the orange, that denotes my 400 errors that I was getting by uh, sending this browser request. So that's why you see um, orange. If I were to select this edge right here, here you can see many w were successful, but these last ones were ones that I just submitted. And you can see these resulted in four XX errors. These are the, the, the 400 errors that I got. Now, the, that was just in the past minute. Now you can see this edge has now gone back to green because in the past minute, I haven't gotten any errors. But if I were to go back to the last five minutes, now I got back an error again. And you can see the health is shown by the also the... Uh, the nodes themselves, that's why product page is showing orange, it's detecting that there is some errors uh, associated with the product page app. Okay, um, that's all I wanted to show for this. It was supposed to be a quick demo, but um, there is a lot to see, and hopefully this made uh, a little better sense. I know when some people see the graph, it could be overwhelming. So hopefully this little demo here tried to put things into perspective. Thanks.